I mean, it, it's so crazy how it changes constantly, like in, in both ways. So I have the case of 245i. Uh, the client went to several attorneys that didn't know about it, and they came to me. I'm like, oh, that's an easy 245i case. You open and shut. And this guy has been like living on, under a bridge essentially for the last 10 years, worried about this. And so 245i is, you have to study, I think I have other stuff I talked about it, but that ended, it sunset in like 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. So all the immigration lawyers that came in after that, unless they studied themselves or had a mentor that told them about it, they're going to miss that issue. Or, you know, they're practicing and then the Adam Walsh Act happens where if your petitioner is like sexual abuse of a child or something, they can't petition unless they get a waiver. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, so all of a sudden, like, if you didn't keep up on the rules that this change or you know, the asylum, what is that, Real ID Act, change some nuanced stuff. Or, uh, you know, uh, for students, you know, there's a lawsuit injunction that came, but the DS status um, doesn't cover you anymore. You go into unlawful presence. If you don't know this stuff and how they're doing it, or right now they've gotten for adjustment, they've gotten really picky about proving that if you're here on an F1 student visa, then see, even if you marry a U.S. citizen, you're adjusting, they want to show that you're in status going to school and, and it wasn't a fraudulent school. And you got to be up on this to make sure to check all the I-20s and have them with you transcripts potentially so they can show that you really went to school. Mm -hmm. Even when it doesn't matter, they want to ask for that stuff. But it just changes every day and so it's like you got to really be on top of it. And that takes a lot of time, you know, like oh, yeah. always, you got to spend the hours, there's no way around it. Uh, and, and you know, clients are, that, that's kind of the value of clients paying for. I'm not necessarily spending all the time sitting with you on your case, but I'm studying everything else in the meantime. So if something happens, I'll know what's going on. I'm going to the meetings, I talk to other people, going to these ALA CBP meetings, ALA USCIS meetings to sit there for a couple hours. You know, I might be there for three hours and I'll learn nothing, but I have to do it every month because maybe one time I'll learn something different that's gonna affect your case. And that's what you're paying for if you get a, a attorney that stays off the top of it. But it's hard, you know, you see, and I hate to bash a whole group of people, but it seems like generally practicing law for a long time, especially immigration, there's a burnout where I, I do see them stop doing that continuing education. Mm -hmm. they, either they're feeling like they know everything or in addition to that, just being over it kind of, seeing oh, yeah. all this garbage constantly, same issues. And uh, th that's unfortunate because I see older attorneys doing malpractice because of that. Now there's mm -hmm. the younger ones don't know what they're doing, there's the older ones don't care, and there's people in the middle are just both of the, both of the above. But uh, th that's something I do see happen, not continue with the education with the changing nature of it. Well, it's, you know, <clears throat> managing, managing clients, managing client expectations, being able to try to uh, project what's going to happen in a world where you really can't project anything anymore. Yeah. I think that comes down to, as an attorney, you are their representative, you're their advocate. If you don't know it, then you shouldn't expend, expect them to know it. Mm -hmm. And so vice versa, the, the clients are saying, here's all this money to give us peace of mind that if something happens, you'll know about it. Yeah. And if you don't know about it, you'll know where to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so it is an interesting concept as an immigration attorney that if you're not constantly kind of on that hustle and grind, if you're not trying to continue to A plus everything, rather than people that do get burned out and say, you know what, a B plus is just as hot, it's just yeah. as fine, um, then it is it is worrisome. Because I think right now, the current political climate, their goal is to oversaturate this side of things, just say get people to say, forget it. Yeah. But if this is your way of life, is this how you create a living, if this is how you're paying back your loans, and trying to build a family and, and a life, well, then you can't just forget it. Yeah. Additionally, I don't think you can leave immigration. It's too, it's too exciting. It's too more. It's too meaningful. It, what you're going to go chase uh, ambulances now? You know, because OPI is not as much of a headache. No, it's a headache. It's just a different type of headache. <laughs> yeah. right? And so it's, it's kind of a testament to practice management is not just about the law. It's about client management expectations. It's also about your own mental and psychological health. It's about keeping, about being physically healthy. Because if you're grinding and one day your back goes out because you've been sitting too long, yeah. your eyes go. I mean, that's something that you need to be considerate of. And if you're under 40, if you're under 30 even, you need to start thinking that this is a 50 year career. And so you need to start creating habits early on. And that comes with balance, that comes with stress management, that comes with realizing, you know what? This case I could make X amount of dollars on, but the amount of stress and anxiety I'm gonna get from it yeah. will not be worth it in the end. And you have to start evaluating that even when it's not your firm, even when it's not your money. Because if you don't start doing that now and creating those habits, it's going to get harder as you get older because the, the bills get longer, the, you start bringing on staff, and now you have to take in everything to, keep, to be able to meet your bottom line at the end of yeah. each month.